You have to go after it. But you can't let that distract you from the core fact that we are starving for revenue and that we're starving our social services and our education. I want to be talking about trigger cuts. Currently, Okay, so I just need to wrap up then. Uh, I want to talk about trigger Let me just say one other couple quick things. I did hand out a package uh, to everybody here that has all of the initiatives that are coming up listed in them because part of the solution that we have is going to be the initiative. We talked about the governor's initiative. We talked about trigger cuts in the package that I handed you is a list of the brutal things that are going to happen with the trigger cuts. And we're talking 100 million for uh, the Delta Million Savings Service, 100 million QC system. You'll see it get all enumerated out there. And the other thing about triggers I just want to mention is when we're thinking about triggers, don't just think in terms of this this budget, the trigger cuts that are going to be activated in the next week. But we also have to think about how we craft the budget for the future. Because it will be it, there will be trigger cuts in the future budget. That's the only way you reconcile a budget where you have these pending initiatives that are out there that, that can raise billions of dollars and the fact that we don't have those initiatives when we're putting together the budget. So there's a whole lot of things I'd love to talk about, and as I said, I could talk for, for hours and hours about it, but I know we're on a time, short time frame, and I look forward to questions and answers and talking with you individually afterwards. Thank you very much. Are you kind words in the video? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So what was the current response? <laughs> what was the correct answer? Oh no. Oh. How many times they got arrested? Oh, 32. 32. Oh my god. <laughs> How are you doing? Yeah, I would have come early. We had our sisters at 8 meeting the day. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we just talked about the health care reform, the Court of Peculiar Act, and the church. We got to get the churches involved. And uh, it, was, it was a good discussion. It was a good discussion. We did. We had, yeah, we had two churches that were very progressive that the pastors came. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Hi, everybody. Okay, I sure will.
These so-called trigger cuts will be devastating for the people of California. There are cuts to community colleges. There will be cuts to in-home supportive services. There will be cuts to services for the developmentally disabled. And these cuts will really be devastating to many of us in our communities. And they come on the heels of almost $15 billion in cuts in these vital services since 2008. With one quarter of the state's children living in poverty and continuing high unemployment, now is the time for California to be strengthening its social safety net, not shredding it. A recent field poll points out that two-thirds of California voters believe that the trigger cuts are, in fact, a bad idea. We are here today to say that enough is enough. We cannot allow a minority of extremists to push the state to such drastic measures. Solutions that raise the state's revenues must be front and center of any budget proposal if we are to restore the programs the state needs to be prosperous again. We're holding this press conference today so that you can hear directly from community members who will speak about how they will be per personally impacted by the cuts if they are impacted. And so first I want to introduce to you Cindy Soto, who works with CalLife and has been a, um, a fearless and tireless advocate for the rights of people with disabilities. Good afternoon. I work part time for Communities Advocacy Living, Independent and Free, which is an independent living center for people with disabilities. Now, I was born with uh, my disability, it's a connective tissue disorder, with, so I have never ever walked, and I have always needed assistance with activities of daily living. So I have benefited greatly my, my entire life from these social safety net programs, such as Medi-Cal, SSI, in-home supportive services, and special education. <clears throat> and these, tr these trigger cuts uh, is, has really scared me to death. Uh, I know that sounds you know, dramatic, but it, it, really, it, really, it really does. As it is, I, um, I'm barely living you know, on my own, and uh, the, any cuts to in-home supportive services will leave me uh, really uh, very vulnerable because I, I, I am completely paralyzed from my children's family. And so I can't even scratch my nose if I want to. So any cut in hours, I'm going to be in big trouble. My health and safety will be very much compromised. I also receive Medi-Cal. So I, I, presently, my health is jeopardized by the cuts to Medi-Cal because I am diabetic, so I am um, very conscious of my feet. I need to see a podiatrist, but I cannot. I need glasses, but I cannot afford them. And I also um, need all sorts of other, you know, health care that I'm not able to receive right now. I really just don't know what I'm going to do. Like, that's all I can think. I've got a nervous right now. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks for, for being so great to come out. The next person we're going to hear from is Marcos Perez from Valley, who's a Valley College student. Uh, thank you very much. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Marcos Perez. I'm a student at Los Angeles Valley College, and I'm here to say that on behalf of all the community college students across California, our education is under attack. If, if these sugar cuts are pulled, we're set to lose $30 million on top of $400 million that we've lost already just last year. Additionally, our fees have gone up from $26 per unit to $36 per unit, and if these if these sugar cuts are pulled, they're expected to go up to $46 per unit. This is unacceptable. If we really want to fix the 
fiscal problems in California. We need to invest in education. We need to invest in our, our health and human services. We need to invest in a social safety net that makes California truly the golden state. And we're, and we're here as members of the community, as students, uh, to stand up and say that we've had enough of this. That when they say cut back, we say fight back. That it's, it's time for our legislature to really stand up for the people, for the 99% of California, and say, you know what, we're going to start coming up with creative solutions to really bring revenue back to the state of California. Enough is enough. Thank you very much. Next, we're going to hear from Mrs. Choi from the Korean Resource Center. Ah, 여러분 안녕하십니까? 저는 한인타운에 살고 있으며 미디칼 혜택을 받고 있는 77세 제이 초이입니다. 저는 2년 전 주예산 삭감을 최초의 피해자가 아닌가 생각합니다. 그때 저는 이가 아래 위로 몇 개씩 치통으로 잠도 이루지 못하고 식사도 할 수가 없었습니다. 그런데 주지사의 예산 삭감으로 인하여 치과 혜택이 줄어들어 병원에 가면 진료비가 많이 나올까 봐 걱정도 되어 병원을 갈 수가 없었습니다. 그러다 며칠이 지나 치통을 도전히 견딜 수가 없어 치과병원에 찾아갔습니다. 의사 선생님은 이를 다 빼고 새로운 털기를 해야 한다고 했습니다. 그리고 전체가 아닌 부분 털기를 하는데 약 2천 불이 든다고 하셨어요. 저는 아픔보다 비용을 어떻게 마련을 해야 하는지 걱정이 앞섰습니다. 2천 불이란 소득, 저소득층의 노인에게는 엄청난 금액입니다. 그래서 저는 아직까지도 치료를 하지 못하고 고통받고 있습니다. 어, 발치를 한 상태로 비용 때문에 더 이상의 치료는 하지 못한 채 지금도 이가 없는 상태로 지나고 있습니다. 언젠가, 언제가 되면 저텅빈 잇몸에 이를 넣을 수 있을까요? 그래서 제가 먹고 싶은 음식을 불편없이 먹을 수 있을까요? 사회의 약자인 연장자와 어린이를 대상으로 대안 없이 차별적인 삭감을 할 것이 아닌 최소한 기본 생존권을 지킬 수 있도록 사회보장 프로그램들을 이런 지켜줘야 합니다. 저뿐만 아닌 모든 사람들이 더 나은 삶을 위해 미국에 이민 왔습니다. 지금도 나는 미국이 가장 위대한 나라라고 생각하며 자부하고 있습니다. 우리는 고칠 것은 고치고 개혁할 것은 개혁하여 우리의 좀더 나은 세상을 우리와 후손들에게 물려주는 사회를 이루도록 노력해야 할 것입니다. 주정부 도금 프로그램은 우리의 생명과 바로 직결되는 것이므로 연장자와 저소득 이민 가정의 어린이들을 보호할 수 있는 근본적인 대책안이 간절합니다. 감사합니다. Hi, my name is Choi Jae Ae, a fellow medical recipient living in Korea, uh, Koreatown, Los Angeles. I believe I was one of the victims of the state budget cut that passed two years ago. During that time, I got a few cavities on my upper and lower teeth. Uh, due to this cavity pain, I could not fall asleep and could not even eat anything. Since the governor passed the budget cut, which reduced the dental benefits, I was afraid to go to the doctor because I knew that I would have to pay a lot more. Nonetheless, I had no other choice than to visit the, the dentist because I could not stand my cavity pain any longer. The dentist said I had to take out all my teeth and get new denture, dentures altogether. Mm -hmm. To implant one or two teeth cost nearly $2,000. Instead of worrying about ending my pain, I was more worried about how I would get $2,000. For a low-income sen senior citizen like myself, $2,000 is a huge amount. That is why I am still very uncomfortable and in pain. To take away my pain because caused by my cavity, I extracted my teeth, but I have not been able to implant new ones because of the dental cost. 
Having only completed half of the dental treatment, I continue to live without a few of my teeth on top and bottom. When will I be able to fill in my missing teeth so that I can eat all kinds of food that I want without any discomfort? For the sake of the people in our community, the elderly and the children, we must not make any discriminatory trigger cuts or budget cuts. To preserve our human right, we must strengthen all our safety net programs. Not only me, but plenty of foreigners immigrated to America for a better life. Even now, I believe and have pride in the fact that America is the most exceptional country. We must fix what needs fixing, we must reform what needs reforming, and we must improve ourselves so that we become a society that fulfills our and our future generation's wish of creating a better world. Since state health care programs are our lifeline, we need, a re we need revenues to protect the elderly and the children of all of California's families. Thank you. Just to give you an example of the enormity of some of these cuts, uh, the trigger cuts would result in $100 million being cut to the University of California, $100 million cut to the California State University system, $100 million in cuts in home support services, $100 million in cuts to the Department of Developmental Services. And that's just to make some of the larger ones, and that's not the end of a very, very long list of cuts. So that's one of the reasons we are so, so concerned here today. I want to thank uh, our, our two uh, impacted speakers for being so brave in speaking out today. It can be very hard to do that. Our message uh, is that we don't need to accept these misguided cuts, this cuts-only policy, a policy that hurts people as well as hurting our economy. So the next speaker I want to introduce is Bessie Cardenas from Planned Parenthood. Hi everyone, I'm here today to speak on behalf of the 120,000 men, women, women, men, and teens that we uh, see in Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood's 18 health centers throughout Los Angeles County each year, um, and the devastation that they um, have suffered as a result of the budget cuts that they've seen, not only impacting them, uh, but their families, their parents, um, their children. Um, as a result of the recession, we know that uh, the need um, has been greater than ever, and we've seen that um, through an increase in patients uh, in our waiting rooms every day. Um, specifically this last year, um, a few weeks ago, a decision was made um, to um, reduce um, our Medi-Cal reimbursement rates by 10%, which um, severely hinders our ability to see patients um, at low cost at a time when they need the services um, more than ever before. So we are urging um, our legislators um, to take a hard look at the numbers and not um, and not continue to balance uh, the budget of the state of California on the backs of the needy as Californians. Like I said, um, not only the cuts um, that affect themselves, but their entire families. So the same families that are being cut, um, you know, their dental benefits are also seeing cuts through uh, to their parents, through, through in-home uh, supportive services, um, are having their children, um, having to pay more money to go to college. So it's really the same families that are seeing the impact um, and it really um, is a danger to the future of our state um, if we have a population that um, is unable to seek care, is unable to become educated. Um, so we you know, urge our legislatures, our legislator, and we urge everyone um, to take action um, to preserve the safety net for uh, Californians. Thank you. There is one solution to this problem, and we want to reinforce that California does not have a spending problem. What we have here is a revenue problem. Raising revenue is the right thing to do, and it's the fair thing to do. A recent report 
released uh, and done by the Institution on Taxation and Economic Policy reports that California co corporations have shown record profits in recent years, but have not paid their fair share to help maintain California's infrastructure and social safety net. In fact, some corporations, such as Intel, brought in $23 billion in profits, but paid zero in state income tax. That is not right, that is not fair. And so we are here to call on our state elected officials to stand with us to work for a more just and equitable budget that reflects the needs and values of all of us in California. Thank you for being here today. Where are you alone interpreting? Huh? Where are you alone? Oh, you're your head. Okay. 